Hey, how's everybody doing today? Okay, we're going to get into some basics here. And I got a comment from one of um, the people that watch this channel uh, talking about, you know, the big circle that I drew on here that uh, having it, it, it's not practical for somebody to draw a big circle or something like that. But one of the reasons that I had the big circles on there was to basically easily show on uh, the scale here. And if you have, if you don't know what we're talking about as far as the scale, go and watch my last two videos. Uh, we discovered a scale, and uh, it is a distance that is working within the design of this Oak Island system. And the reason why I had the circles on there is to show basically these two center points, the end stone, and triangle two uh, are the center points and they go through main features like the uh, money pit and the south anchor and both of them go through the north anchor and there's another one over here is the hole and these are probably main features in the design uh, I don't know yet but uh, what I'm going to get into today is the basics of this uh, this also ties in with Nolan's triangle. So what I want to do is I'm going to bring up this calculator first and right here you can see is uh, 1440. In the past videos we uh, took the uh, the written scale uh, number off of the map which was 1347 and we converted it into today's feet because 1347 is pre-1668 units of measure for a foot. So we had to convert it to 1443. However, I'm believing that the scale unit right now is 1440. And the reason why? Because he just rounded it off to the nearest. And I'll show you guys We'll go through this calculation, just bear with me. Okay, the pre-1668 is 326.569. That's the number I got from the internet. And then you multiply that by 1347 written on the map. That's what it is in millimeters. We're gonna divide it now by the current foot of 304.8, which gives us 1443.2 feet. We rounded down to 1443. However, if you just use 1347 times 326, don't use the decimal points, and divide it by, well, we'll use our current accuracy you end up with 1440.68 feet so I mean if we were going to be a mathematician and everything we would round if we were going to round it we'd round it to to the nearest if we we're going to round it to the nearest one foot we would put 1441 but I don't think that's what we're doing here I think the designer just made it simple and did it to 1440 feet and this is why I say that. The dimensions of Nolan's Cross from the headstone to the midstone, I put away my calculator, let's bring that back up, is 430 feet. Okay? From the headstone, uh, from the midstone to the endstone is four, uh, 290 feet. See where I'm going with this? All right. This 720 also is the length of the cross member. This dimension from this stone to this stone is 720 feet, which is really cool. Now, if you, if you were going to take from here and mirror it over, which is why we have this extension triangle, here it's a mirror of this dimension here if we flip it over completely from this end 
to this end. So that would be times 2 equals 1440 feet. So what is the scale? The scale is the headstone to the end stone times 2. Okay? Now, an, another interesting fact about Nolan's Cross, from the top stone to the headstone is 145 feet, which is 145 feet times 2 is 290 feet. So from midpoint to the middle here is 145 feet the same as the distance from the top stone to the headstone. This is the mathematics of Nolan's cross. Another thing is too is now that I positioned this triangle 2 at the known scale length, if I take a line perpendicular to uh, the pointer of Nolan's cross, which is also this line right here, and go through, it goes through the center and bisects this with intolerance. It's not perfect on this map, but it with intolerance, it bisects this section. And this may have to do with the geometric progression that I saw on the 90-foot stone way back when. And I'm going to be rethinking that and uh, seeing if I can further decipher geometric progression through La Formula. But uh, that is what I have for you guys, a little fundamentals. Uh, another thing I want to show you for, show you guys, uh, it was asked if I could make this simple. We had these, um, these big circles here, but another thing that's con congruent in this design is both these angles, and if we put it right here, it's going through uh, I think that says 85 and 125. It is a 40 degree angle there and we go here I think it's uh, 60 degrees yep it's supposed to be 60 degrees 60 degrees and a hundred and a hundred degrees so that's 40 40 degrees both of those angles are 40 degrees. So that's another consistency. Another thing is um, it sort of goes back. The number 40 is coming up a lot. It was in the 90-foot stone, 40 feet more. Um, so maybe that is something of a clue on the 90-foot stone. The, the number 40 is working out here in these 40 degree angles. That's just a, a, a hypothesis that we may explore. But uh, it, there it is, simple, the simple geometry of the scale, uh, what its major features are pointing out in very easy terms of the end stone. It's uh, 40 degrees and the scale length to these two points. And then if you uh, discover uh, the triangle 2 from this intersection here going perpendicular to that point. I don't know what this distance is, but if you went out here and triangulated it here, then you have 40 degrees. But then you also have this right here is 27 degrees. And that's a number that I will show you in my next video about how this number can be ascertained through uh, the encryption of La Formula. It was actually shown to me very easy, very simply uh, found out uh, in the La Formula by one of uh, the team members uh, named William. And that will be on my next video. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And we're moving on, and we'll see what comes up next.